With this video, I'm going to discuss using a range object and the for each looping statement. The range object is similar to the example that you saw in one of the prior videos, and this is just another uh, example of it. And uh, the for each is a very powerful and kind of a cool use uh, of, of, of a range object. So um, let's take a look at that. But before we do, if you want to uh, put some random numbers on your sheet here, you can use the ran between formula. Uh, I use the ran between formula here, ran between negative 100 and positive 100. Then I copied the values and I did a paste special right back on top and pasted the values only. So this is a way you can get yourself a bunch of random numbers. Let's take a look at the code. The, uh, the code uh, I've done quite a few things here, just some simple things, but you'll see what I'm talking about with uh, using lots of variables. So the very first variable you'll notice here is I'm declaring a range variable. Now this is something new. Again, that was in a prior video, but uh, this is a, a type that a spreadsheet has, of course. It makes sense that you'd have a range type in a spreadsheet program. Um, that's going to be that's going to hold the data range. In other words, all of the data will be stored in that range. The next variable you'll see here is the cell variable that I'm going to use for my for each loop. As I loop over the range, I'm going to access each cell in that range, and I need a variable to store each cell individually into as I loop over that range. You'll see that when we get down there. So here are some pretty typical variables, last row, start row, um, and, and a column variable to keep track of which column is holding the data. Um, the next thing you'll notice here is I'm declaring some variables to hold values for my colors. This is something we haven't done before, but it's a nice idea. So, so I'm going to go ahead and store a color into these various variables. And, and notice the names I'm using. I'm saying zero color. That's what I'm going to use for any value that I find. It's a zero, for instance. And, and the rest of these are similarly named. Um, then I initialize my starting row to one, and I initialize the column I want the data to be, that the, the data is found into one. And then I, then I use my find last row function to tell me in the current column, uh, the column where I've said the data is, I want to know what the last row is. And so I then store that in this variable. So here's the function call to find last row. Of course, I had to include that function in my code. And I copied and pasted that function in from our standard subs that, that it's found in the uh, Blackboard website. So this is something just to keep around. It's a, it's a nice little handy function to find the last row of your data. So. Uh, Here's the uh, kind of important statement here in this program that gets us started. You'll notice that what I'm doing here is I'm assigning to the data range variable a range on my sheet. Now, a key idea here, of course, is you have to remember whenever you're using an object variable here, and this is an object variable. It's not one of our primitive variables that we've been working with so long. The long, the integer, the string the boolean we haven't really used boolean much yet but those and the double those are all primitive data types in this language the object data types are they act quite different in their assignment you'll notice that i have to use the set keyword to assign a value to an object and again i'm constantly forgetting this if you forget the program will pretty much tell you that you made that mistake now, let's go ahead and take a look at what I assigned to my data range variable here. So I basically said I want a range. And so notice the key word there, the, the object there, the range. I'm saying I want a range. And I want the range to be from this cell, comma, to the last cell. So let's just take a look at this first one. It says cells. And so I want to start at the start row in the given column. So that's going to say I want to start the range there. And this is the ending cell for my range. Again, notice here I'm using last row in the stated column. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just defining a range on my spreadsheet. This is pretty similar to what you've seen before. Whenever you define a range in a spreadsheet, you say something like A1 colon C3. Well, instead of saying A1, we're using numbers here with cells to specify our range. It's much more flexible. And this is the same story. Here's the ending cells for the ending cell for our range. Again, remember, you have to use the set keyword or you're going to get an error. Um, so here are my three statements for 
storing the color. And, and again, this is just RGB, and I store the negative color, the zero color, and the positive color there. Now, let me just show you a little, a little trick here to figure out colors if you haven't already figured this out. If you go into Excel and you go to the Home ribbon, and you just click here on the font color, you'll notice that there's an option down here at the bottom of font color for more colors. Well, of course, then it comes up with this little palette of colors, but you'll notice that there's a custom tab here. So when you go to the custom tab, you can click anywhere in here and you can slide your slider, you know, to get different intensities of color. And you then notice the RGB values just below down here. So these RGB values, you can then just use those in your program. You might have to write them down to remember them, of course, but that works pretty well. Let's cancel out of here and go back to our code. Developer tab, Visual Basic. So I basically picked some colors here for my various cells that I wanted to color, positive, negative, and zeros, of course. And now let's come down and take a look at this for each. The for each syntax looks very similar to the for next loop, but there obviously is a different difference. I, I really like that kind of similar but different concept. <laughs> I always get a kick out of that, sorry. So what we say is, is we say, okay, we have a data range here, and this data range essentially is one or more cells. A data range actually can be one cell. That seems a little weird, but it can be one cell. It would be one cell, for example, if you specified the start cell to be the same as the end cell. So if I said start row and column right here. It would be a single cell range. Well, in this case, of course, we know we have many cells in our range. And so what the for each basically says, it says for each cell in the data range. Now, something kind of magic happens here. What Visual Basic will do, it will, it will automatically, under the covers, we don't see it, it will assign each cell in turn to this variable cell. And whatever the variable name is, you could call this variable here Bob if you wanted to, and it would work just fine. It has to be a range variable because we're storing a cell into it, and a single cell is a range. So it has to be a range variable, but you can call it whatever you want. The name cell actually works really great, and so I would su suggest that you use that name every time. And so what we do is we assign each cell in turn. So every time this loop executes and comes around, it says next cell, it takes the next cell from the data range and assigns it and stores it in the variable cell. And then it goes around the loop again, next cell, and it assigns it and stores it into the cell. And it just keeps doing that until it is processed every cell. Well, we're doing something very simple here. We're basically just saying if the cell is less than zero. Now, I'm saying if cell. You could say if cell.value, but that's the default property of a cell or of a range. And so I don't need to say dot value. Many people will say dot value just for clarification. I leave it off. So I'll leave it here for now so you can see it. But then you can contrast it to this statement down here where I just say if cell equals zero. That again is doing exactly the same thing as saying cell dot value. So the first thing I do is I say is cell less than zero. If it is, then I set the interior color of my cell to negative color. And the negative color was assigned right above here. You can see the RGB values. Then I have an else if, because I actually have three things I have to check. So I say else if cell is equal to 0, assign the 0 color to the interior of the cell. Else, and I can put a little comment here. I don't need to, but it might add clarification. I could say else positive number. And that just kind of helps people understand what's going on. This one says less than zero. This one says equals to zero. And then I just say else. But I don't need a test here because that's the only other thing it can be. So I say, say else, set the color to positive color. Let's just go ahead and run this and see what it does. And it does pretty much what you would expect. It changes the colors to the positive, negative, and zero colors. Let's go back to that code. Again, we're talking about the for each loop here. And we're looping over a data range that we had set up above. And we just check each cell in turn in that data range and do whatever we want to do with it. Here we're just checking to see if it's less than or equal to 0 or, uh, or greater than 0. OK, you should give this piece of code a, a shot. Because again, typing the code in and running it makes it real. So please do that.